Hello everybody! Welcome back to String and Story. I'm so thrilled that you're here. My name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Thank you so much for joining me for this Thursday morning class. I'm here every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern to teach you something about quilting and quilting with confidence. Today we're continuing our color and choosing fabric series and we're talking about three color quilts and it's going to be fabulous. Now, let me make sure that I've got this. Oh, I should make sure my computer's muted. We don't need to hear me. Um, I'm gonna make sure I get this pulled up, get this shared. As you are hopping on a couple of things. One, we have a sponsor today that I'm gonna talk about in just a minute once a few of us get hopped on. Two, well, you're kind of waiting for me to get myself all shared around here. Um, make sure that you answer this week's question of the week. So this week, um, what did I ask this week? That's a great question. I asked what you would make, well you can't answer that yet, hi Di! Um, I guess I should go ahead and tell you about our sponsor. I would love to say thank you to Paintbrush Studio Fabrics for being today's sponsor. Um, hey Sue! Oh guys, I just love this, it's like my friends all coming over every Thursday morning. I like get all distracted and flustered and excited. Um, this week we're sponsored by Paintbrush Studio Fabrics, which you guys might remember from a few weeks ago when I went absolutely bananas over these gorgeous solids. Remember when I was making these placemats? I still actually have two to make, let's be honest. But do you guys remember these? So these fabrics, every single color you're seeing here, I think it's like 24 colors. It's a lot of colors. I'm sorry, paintbrush. I should have this information in front of me. Um, but this is part of a bundle called Jackie's Favorites. It's curated by Jackie Gehring um, from their gorgeous painter's palette solid. I made a napkin too. Here we go. See? Out of a couple of them. And they sponsor today's episode and they are giving away a fat quarter bundle with all these colors that I'm showing you. So, if you just saw all those colors and you're very excited and you're like, ooh, those are pretty. If you won this fat quarter bundle, what would you make? I want you to put that in the comments for me and that's your entry for this week's giveaway. Now, there is one little catch to this week's giveaway. It's only open till Sunday night. So, what that means is Go ahead and answer that question. And two, I'm going to hit share over to the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group so that our friends over there can come join us. While I'm doing that, I want you to do it too. Share so your friends can enter so word can spread. These are the most freaking gorgeous solids, y'all. Like I can't, I open, they're like butter. They're thick and soft and the colors are rich. I just, mm, I don't have enough nice things to say. There's so many nice things to say about this fabric. So if you're pumped about that, Make sure you answer this week's question, what would you make with these gorgeous solids? And then hit like and share on this video to tell all your friends about how cool and fun and exciting this is. All right. It would help if I could type, you know. All right. Now, let me look at my own caption to make sure I'm not missing anything. Hey, Rhoda, I'm so glad you're here. Let me see who's here with me. I, I haven't greeted you all yet, and I always do that. So let's let's do that. Hello, Di. Hello, Veronica. Hi, Tina. Hi, Sue. Minus eight. Good Lord. How are you not frozen solid? I am so sorry. I hope you have a lot of quilts. Deborah's dogs. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Di again. Oh, thanks. Being here with you guys makes me smile. Um, Hey Vicki, uh, for the record, who was it that I just saw said that? Uh, Tina, all the things is an acceptable answer. I thought about making that kind of a cop-out answer and like maybe you couldn't say that, but that would be my answer. My answer would be all the things. So if you need to say all the things, that's acceptable. Um, <laughs> hey Gina, hey Vicki, hey Bonnie, hey Tina, hey Di. I'm, re I'm repeating myself a few times as some of y'all are answering these questions. Hey, Lori. I love seeing you guys here. This is so fun. So, today is sponsored by Paintbrush. Thank you to them. So, as I mentioned, the giveaway ends Sunday night. The reason it ends Sunday night is because this is running in parallel with the giveaway over on Instagram because we are promoting these fabrics. There's a whole group of us that are doing giveaways one week after the other. So, tomorrow night, if you follow me on Instagram, just a little hint, hint that maybe you should check my feed tomorrow night. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You might have another chance to enter. So it's going to end Sunday night in conjunction with the giveaway on Instagram, um, which means let's get the word out, y'all. Let's get the word out. I need to, let's see. Oh, and there's more. But wait, there's more. Does that sound, that sounds like a terrible infomercial. Pretend I didn't do that. Anyway, there really is more because 
you'll also want a copy of the perfect fit pattern. Because we're talking about three color quilts today, which maybe we really should get on with. Let me grab my fabric bundles that I forgot about. All right, let's see all these, a beautiful quilt. It would be a beautiful quilt. Let me see less of my caption. Um, ooh, use them with some big old large prints. That sounds amazing, Tina. A tote bag, Winifred, that'd be gorgeous. Do you follow Jenny Baker? Cause she had some tote bag patterns come out not too long ago and they're fabulous looking. And they have like some cool piecing on them. And you know, I'm just saying it show off the colors really well. A quilt for one of your kids, I love that. Hey Bev. Might put them on the shelf and stare. You know, it was tempting, Cheryl. It was tempting. But my birthday, as you guys might remember, is next Saturday. And I wanted to have new party place mats. So, ooh, pay, pair them with a cape stash. That would be good. That would be good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Wonderful. Wonderful. Before we get started, there's one more thing I want to tell you guys about. I was completely 100% blown away by how many of you were interested in the post that I put up a couple of days ago about doTERRA essential oils. This, this bottle might look familiar right here in front of this quilt block, which guys, um, sneaky peeky, this is the serious quilt block up behind me. I only have one up because I can't give all my secrets away yet. It's not launch time yet, but I was completely blown away by how many of y'all were like, huh, your experience with essential oils has me curious. So here's the deal. I want to answer your questions and the easiest way that I know to do that is just like this on Facebook live. So tonight inside the quilting Rockstars Facebook group, we're going to do like a little mini crash course on why I love essential oils and what I use them for. And y'all can answer, you know, get all your questions answered. Um, and if you are like, I need to try these, we can talk about that. It's going to be awesome. Um, if you're going, eh, mm, I'm a quilter oils, not my thing. That's fine. It, that's totally fine you don't have to come. I'd love for you to come. I want to share this with you, but if you're like really Holly Ann, like essential oils are not my thing, that's totally fine. I will not be offended if you skip tonight's live. Um, but for those of you that have been emailing me with questions, I want to answer your questions. I want to give you information and I'm in an oil class right now that is, so there's a free class that's happening next week that some of you are taking with me. Um, but I'm in the class beyond that, learning more about my oils. And there's some really cool ways that we can use oils in our quilting. And I really want to talk to you guys about that too. So we're going to do essential oils for quilters crash course tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. I mean, I'm pumped because I get to hang out with you guys. So if you're interested, I'll see you there. There is a link to the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group um, in the caption of this video. I'm like, what am I trying to say? In the caption of this video. So if you're not already part of Quilting Rockstars, you should be because we'd love to have you. And you can join me there this evening. Okay. Hey, Lynn, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Yes, Cheryl, I love Serenity. Um, yay, Cheryl, I'm so glad. And by the way, if you can't tune in, um, it will be available on replay as always. Okay, that being said, all the things being said, Let's talk about fabric, right? Last, well, two weeks ago, we talked about contrast. We talked about three different types of contrast. Say them with me now. We talked about value, color, and scale. I really hope that at least one of you actually said that out loud in your sewing room because it would hands down make my morning. <laughs> value, color, and scale, right? Um, oh, Lynn, I'm so sorry. I just This is me wrapping a nice quilt around you and handing you tea, okay? There you go. You're good now. Um, <laughs> and then last week we talked about two color quilts and two color quilts really hinge on stark contrast, right? It's a make it or break it, which by the way, yet another thing. I just, I always get so excited guys. Last week's winner was Michelle McGinley, which I think that R is not supposed to be at the end of her name. Michelle McGinley, if you're here, please email me because you want a copy of the Dogwood Blossoms quilt pattern. And I would love to email that over to you. So drop me an email and I'll get that sent over. Okay. This week we're talking about three color quilts. Here's what's fun about three color quilts. You start to be able to use a scale of value. So when you're doing a two color quilt, you have a light and you have a dark if you're using value as a scale. We talked about how sometimes you may not actually want to have that much difference in value. Gasp. I know that's a horrifying, shocking thought. 
But my Dogwood Blossoms quilt, my first one, really didn't have a lot of value difference. I relied heavily on warm, cool color contrast, right? And it made for a gentler quilt. So sometimes you want that stark contrast, sometimes you don't. But if you are going for value contrast in a two color quilt, you have a light and you have a dark. That's like your only options, right? Um, yes, Rhoda. Did I email you, Rhoda? I feel like I might have just sent you an email. Was that you? I just sent a bunch of emails because I'm really bad at staying on top of my inbox and I'm trying to play catch up. Hey, Robin. <laughs> now in three color quilts, what's exciting is you start to get a, you start to get a range of things. You can have a range of value, a range of colors, a range of scale in your prints. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now I have talked your ear off already about triads. Triads are colors on a color wheel that are equidistant. They form an equilateral triangle, right? The most common triangle or most common um, triad is primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Now, I just want to reassure you that primary colors don't have to look like primary school, right? Like often we think of like our kid's doctor's office or like their kindergarten classroom. And it's like, I really don't want my quilt to look like a first grade classroom straight out of the 1990s. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You know that one. Now maybe, maybe you're still totally jamming that look. That's totally fine. But it's not my aesthetic. Partially because I red is rough for me. Red and I don't always get along. But there are colors that bump right up against red that I can use to form a triad. And this is one of the polls that y'all saw on the blog. There's a link to this week's blog post if you have not checked it out already. So I used like a reddish orange and a mustard yellow and an aqua. Look, I color coordinate. Mm, look at that. How lovely. Um, it must be fall. This is a triad. This is using um, color contrast, which I'm realizing I'm jumping ahead of myself slightly, so I'm going to backtrack. That was on the top of my stack. That's why I got excited about it. Value. Let me backtrack to value and talk about that. So this is here's a scale of value. Now I've flustered myself because I got out of order. Oh, well. It'll be okay. Y'all are used to this, right? Like, the, it, this is just how we roll. Value. So if I were doing a two color quilt, I would only have a light and a dark, right? Black and white. This is actually kind of an ivory color. It's a linen. It's really gorgeous, just for the record. So what I've done here, so I've got a couple of things going on. I don't have a lot of change in color, right? This is all a grayscale, but I've got a light, a medium, and a dark on my value scale. If I were to do a black and white photo, it would show up just like this. You could do this with colors as well. You could do a very light blue, you could do a medium blue, you could do a navy, right? Then, hang on, did I miss something that I need to answer in the comments? Drat. Is it wrong that you use your dog who sits on my, nope, not a problem. <laughs> I used to use my pregnant belly when I was pregnant with the boys, like similar concept, right? That's fantastic. <laughs> Love you guys. Um, I also decided to do something with scale here. So jumping down to that third type of contrast, I have a near solid. Y'all can see the texture just a little bit in the light. And then I've got kind of a minimal print. I don't know that I'd go so far as to call it a blender because it has such a high contrast because it's black and white, but it's, an, it's you know, it's kind of what we think of with a blender, kind of a minimal print. This is by Stacy Bloomfield for a gingerbread for Moda and I love it a lot, sidebar. And then I have this gorgeous owl. I got this from Michelle over at Meech Quilts. I don't know who it's by. Uh, Dear Stella, somebody for Dear Stella or by Dear Stella. It's fantastic. So I also have this scale thing going on, right? That I have um, a blender, a solid, and a print. So I've got two types of contrast, so much fun. And then that print adds a little bit of something, right? Value contrast. Then we're gonna, now here we are at the triads. And as I mentioned before, I talk a lot more about triads inside my class intro to color theory. So if you're like, you keep talking about triads and you've thrown out some examples, but I'm still super confused. That's the class for you. There's a link to the classes in the caption, um, stringofstory.com slash classes, right? And it goes through all kinds of color theory. It's an awesome resource. If you're like, Holly Ann, I'm tuning in each week and this is great and everything, but I'm still super nervous about doing this myself. That is the class for you. Also, make use of the comments and ask all the questions. I always try to remind you guys, this is a great time to ask questions. Just because I'm plowing through some examples and teaching, interrupt me. Please interrupt me if you're confused, if you're unsure, and then utilize the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. If you're like, oh, I think I'm gonna make the perfect fit quilt and I need three colors, then 
let me go pick those out and share them in the group and I can get feedback and we are more than happy to help you out. So here's my triad. Now here's something else that's interesting that goes on with triads and that's fun to do with three color quilts in general is I have two warms and a cool and that just is another fun little thing that's visually going on here, right? The other common triad is secondary colors, which is purple, orange, and green. This was hard as well because purple's not my strong suit. So I went with like an eggplanty color. And then to get a little bit of value contrast, I've got a much lighter print going on for the center one, but it has a lot of orange in it. Can you guys see that? It's got this like really light peachy background and a lot of orange print happening. This is a, definitely a blender, nice bold print, and then a stripey stripe because who doesn't love stripey stripes, right? You know, again, a triad option. Now on the topic of color, and I'm going to hold this up as an example. I tried to find more three color quilts hanging around. I'm looking over at my stuff that's in progress. I'm realizing I don't do three color quilts super often, which I think is kind of odd because I love three color combinations. This is my perfect fit quilt. And this is a great example for something else. Three color quilts also lend themselves really well to team spirit, which also connects really well with quilting for the guys in your life, right? Sometimes guys are the hardest folks to make quilts for and to pick colors for. Using their favorite team's colors is an awesome way to do that. And using the pattern like Perfect Fit or other kind of geometric based three color quilts is an awesome way to do that. And if you think about, I'm gonna use Auburn as an example because it's the first one that came to mind. I literally have like no affiliation with Auburn. So if you're an Auburn fan, woohoo. If you hate Auburn, bear with the example. Um, but team colors are chosen the way they are for a reason. They're chosen to have pop and to have contrast. So for example, Auburn, and I hope I get this right, because I'm going to be super embarrassed if I, I don't know if I, somebody will be embarrassed for me. Maybe I will not be sufficiently embarrassed. But Auburn is blue, orange, and I believe it's white, right? So you've got blue and orange, which, here, let me, I don't have the right blue, so we're just going to improvise with the blue that I have handy. Um, blue and orange, right? And those are complementary colors, so they make each other pop. And then by adding white, these team colors have a value contrast. So, War Eagle. See, Gina, I knew somebody would War Eagle for me. Do I have this right? Is, is white the other one, kind of the third bonus color? If not, maybe just fib to me. I don't know. No, I can take the truth. I can take the truth. It's okay. Anyway, contrast is added with this third bonus color. So if you're looking at a three-color quilt, you're like, I want to make a three-color quilt. I'm unsure about my choices. Team colors are a great way to go. If you're going, I need to make, yes, what, yes! See, Gina, I knew something. I knew something. <laughs> the Auburn colors fit really well with my brand colors, so maybe I should develop an affinity for Auburn. I don't know. I don't like football. Sorry, guys. I dated a football player in high school, and I still don't get it. My bad. It's okay. It means I get to quilt on Friday nights with you guys instead of watching high school games, I guess. I don't know. Um... <laughs> The one of just joins us from the game, and that works well, too. Um, for any of you outside the U.S. who are like these crazy Americans in their American football, yes. Just yes, that's all I can offer you. Um, so, in the three-color quilt department, if you're looking at um, the, a guy in your life, and you're like, I need to make him a quilt, how do I even begin to know if it's going to work or not? This is very simple. You find a three-color quilt, quilt pattern. I mentioned perfect fit, you know, just an example. And you take his team colors and you marry them and you'll make a quilt that he will adore. Like D for done, he's all in, it's fantastic. So there's my like cheater tip for quilting for guys. Now, if you have ladies in your life who are very like enthusiastic about sports, this of course works as well. I just find that often folks are like, I don't know how to quilt for the guys in my life. And that would be my recommendation, just for what that's worth. Now, finally, Three color quilts begin to introduce another concept. Yay, Lynn! Does he have like a favorite not American football team, like soccer team, which would be football, but that would be confusing in the context of this conversation. You know, anyway. Three color quilts also introduce another concept that I love to use for choosing fabrics, and this is something that many of you are gonna be familiar with. 
and that is choosing a hero print. I mean, is this a hero print or what? Meech, I think I got this one from you too. This is an art gallery. Who designed this? Barry J, of course. Barry J and her amazing oils. So this is a beautiful hero print. Lots of colors. There's my Meech. Hey girl. Um, lots of colors, lots of textures, right? And if I put this with a whole lot of other big floral prints, now you might be a curated maximalist like Barry J. If you're not familiar with that, that just means she's for all the prints, all the colors, all the time. And yet somehow by magic, she makes it all look good together all the time. I don't really understand that part. She's just kind of magic. Um, but for the rest of us, we maybe need to pull a couple of colors out from this, right? And so what I did is I picked two complementary colors that also show up in here. My choices will not surprise you, right? I chose a blue and an orange. They're complementary colors. It's a warm and a cool. And they also tie in gorgeously with this print. I'm not even lying. I wish I had a couple of yards of each of these so I could make a perfect fit out of this because I think it would add such a twist to that pattern. Not that I have time to take on another quilt right now, but now if you're looking at this and you're going, yeah, orange is so not my thing. Oh my goodness, die! I gotta read the story. Hang on. I went to an American football game in Wembley a few years ago. Don't have a clue what was. I I don't know, die. I have all the same questions that you do. All the same questions. <laughs> I'm sure someone here could enlighten us. I can't. I dated a linebacker, and I still have no clue, at all. Like at all. I don't know. Um. So if you're looking at this and. <laughs> And um, those amazing solids and a hero print. There you go, Tina. If you're looking at this, you're like, orange is not my thing. There's a couple of other things going on in this print you could do. You could pull out um, orange. Nope, not orange. We're not doing orange. We could do yellow and like a burgundy, like a wine color. Some of these dark pinks. You could rich, like you could pick a richer tone of that, like a wine color because purple and yellow are opposites, right? You could do a blue and a green, so two cool colors. Those are next to each other on the color wheel, so those also have a really wonderful relationship. You could do pink and yellow. You could do pink and green. Um, I would not use this gray. I would pick stuff from the flowers. There's a couple of other oranges in there that you could use too. So like you could use, you could use this orange this darker orange. If you're like, I like that rusty color better, right? So you can play around with this. Now this kind of print also lends itself as we start talking about four, five, and six color um, quilts. Maybe I'll use the same bundle and add to it each week. Um, but this, this is a great print for picking colors out of, right? And notice I did not pick solids in this instance. You totally could. But notice that I chose to play with scale. I've got my focal print. I've got like a teeny tiny blendery print. And then I chose something in the middle, right? So that I get lots of movement. This is darker. This is lighter by just a little bit. It's not a whole lot of value contrast, but it's a little bit, right? And then I get those color contrasts going. So there you go. What questions can I answer for you guys? I've blown through my examples. I'm all kinds of excited. I love this series, y'all. I love playing with my fabric every week. Oh, I just bumped the table. Sorry, everybody. Um, Rhoda, that's... Rhoda, I feel like... Yes. <laughs> just yes. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's totally befuddled by football. For those of you who are not befuddled by football, I have so much respect for that because I just totally cannot... My brain doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. Um... Any questions about color, earthquake? <laughs> Lynn, that's, yeah, it's what it looks like, isn't it? Any questions about color, texture, print for three color quilts? Before I wrap this up for you guys. These lessons are quick, I know that. They're kind of a flyby, um, but sometimes we just need to see some samples to get inspired, right? Um, and maybe you've got a quilt pattern that's sitting on your shelf that you've been staring at it for a while, but you're not sure what fabrics you use. Go over there and count how many colors or fabrics that you need, right? And then watch the video from the series that goes with it. Um, the Earth moves up. <laughs> that's maybe taking it too far. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
know if my curation abilities are quite that earth shattering, but I deeply enjoy sharing them. Um, but if you've got a pattern that's just been befuddling you, go watch the video that has that many colors in it. So we've already done two, today's three. We're going to continue and we're going to do four, five, and six. And once you get beyond six colors in a quilt, um, you're going to get into the point where you're going to be using like a light blue and a dark blue. Like you're going to kind of have to default to that. Because just trying to have like more than six distinctive colors in a quilt is going to get really overwhelming really fast, right? So that's why we're going up through six. That's about the most that I typically see in a quilt pattern. Um, and if you've got a, a pattern that you're like, I want to make this, but I don't know. Remember, we're very careful inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group not to infringe copyright. However, you can share the cover image of a pattern. That, that's perfectly shareable, right? So just take a picture of the cover, make sure it doesn't have any of the dimensions or cutting instructions or anything like that showing. Um, that cover image and share it in the group and say, anybody have any ideas? Here's kind of some colors I think I'd like to work with, but I'm just feeling stumped. Or you can pull some fabric and put it with that photo and say, will this work? That's what this group is for, right? That's what the Quilting Rockstars are for. Um, probably broke all the rules on your Aldebaran. I don't remember you breaking rules. Oh, Zuma Rainbow, yes, Lynn, just yes. I'm not usually like a rainbow quilt person because I like to be a little bit more picky and choosy with myself, but the Zuma line lends itself really beautifully to that color wash. Mm, yes. Robin, I don't remember you breaking rules. I'd have to go back and look at the picture. So it didn't stand out to me for what that's worth. Maybe that's reassuring. Let me make sure I have not missed anything. Love it, Tina. Is it wrong to use you? I just love that, that you're propping the phone on your dog. Um, even when you think your quilt will be two colors, you end up with more. Sue, did you see the video last week that I shared my um, Dog with Blossoms quilt? And it has four colors. It's a two color quilt, but I used yellow and blue paired as a warm and a cool, and then green and red paired as complementary colors. So it still wasn't too quilts. So I'm with you. I'm with you, Sue. All right, my dears, let me run through these reminders one last time. If you have questions, go ahead and pop them in the comments while I do this. Then we'll go ahead and wrap it up because I'm going to see you guys again tonight. So, you know, it's not going to be that long till we'll be hanging out again. So again, thank you so much to Paintbrush Studio Fabrics for sponsoring today's video and for being willing to give away a gorgeous fat quarter bundle of Jackie's favorites. Again, I'm just going to hold these up while I'm talking. So y'all can see some of these stunning, stunning color. I, guys, these colors, I can't even begin to tell you. I can't even begin to tell you. So make sure that you answer this week's question of the week, which asks, what would you make with a fat quarter bundle of all these gorgeous fabrics? Here's the napkin. I have some more napkins I need to make, but isn't that just, mm, I just, and they're so soft and they're so saturated. So what would you make with this bundle? Put that in the comments. Remember, this week's giveaway is a short giveaway. It's only open till Sunday night. So what that means is you should enter now, which you enter by leaving a comment about what you would make, and then go ahead and hit like and share on this video to tell your friends, hey, here's a super cool giveaway, and here's a super cool free class that happens every Thursday. You should come hang out with us, right? Ooh, a lap quilt. I love that idea, Linda. Um, last week's winner was Michelle McGinley. You want a copy of... Um, the Dogwood Blossoms quilt pattern, send me an email at stringandstory at gmail.com and I would love to get that over to you as soon as possible. Also, this week's winner will also win a copy of my Perfect Fit pattern because this week was three color quilt week and this is the pattern that I have right now that goes with that, which is very fun. Um, any other reminders? Be sure to check out this week's blog if you had not had a chance to do that already. You can read through kind of my thought process with some of these fabrics that I chose and see pictures and it's there for you to refer back to. And this video will be embedded there later so that you can see it again if you want to revisit. Um, let's see. Love it. This one, this is the Serious Quilt Block with Maureen Cracknell uh, for Art Gallery Fabric, her Autumn Vibes line. There'll be a whole quilt soon. Don't you worry. That pattern comes out next week too which is really exciting. Um, a cuddle quilt. I love that baby beller quilt. Smaller version of the Aldebaran block for a runner. I love that, Sue. 
I love reading your answers. So check out this week's blog. Um, if you're curious about color theory, I recommend my intro to color theory class. It's available on demand online, stringandstory.com slash classes. And finally, if you are one of the many people who was inspired or made curious by my post the other day about doTERRA essential oils, um, tonight inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, we're going to do a special live that I'm going to show you some of my favorite oils, how I use them, how I use them with my quilting, because um, oils are actually a pretty important part of my quilting routine at this point, which you all have been seeing on Friday night as I've been diffusing more and more. Um, so come with your questions and your curiosities. And for those of you who are like, Ugh, no, I just want this to be quilting. Oils are not my thing. Just skip tonight's video. I will not be offended. I promise. But there's enough of you that have emailed me that the most efficient and useful way that I can answer these questions for you guys is to do this on Facebook Live. Um, and if you leave tonight's Facebook Live curious about how you can get these oils in your hands, we can talk about that. It's going to be great. Um, but I mostly just want to educate you guys about why I love these. You guys know me. When I love something, I cannot help but share it. So come join me tonight, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. There's a link in the caption of this video. I would love for you to come join us. Even if you're not super into the oil thing, you should still join the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group because Friday night, tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern is social hour. What is social hour, Holly Ann? Well, right now we're working on this quilt along. And I have a whole bunch more blocks I actually need to cut out in preparation because I arranged my colors and realized that I need a few more of some of these colors cut out. Um, this week is our last week of making blocks. Next week we're going to put it together. If you're not part of the Aldebaran Quilt Along, just bring your own project and tune in. We chat, we tell silly stories, I answer questions. If you're working on something and you get, get stuck, that's absolutely the time to be asking questions. Um, and just making myself available to hang out, to keep you company, um, to talk quilting, to talk whatever, right? So 8.30 p.m. tonight, we're going to get oily and talk about essential oils. 8.30 p.m. tomorrow night, we're just going to chat and make some Aldebaran blocks. It's going to be great. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Please make sure you enter today's giveaway. If you love having this class available to you every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, as much as I love giving it because it's basically the highlight of my week. All of my lives. I have multiple highlights because I love the lives. Um, then please make sure that you hit like and share on this video. Share it to your page. Share it to your favorite Facebook group. Share it with your great aunt Susie who quilts sometimes. Um, just spread the word so that we can all be here and party together. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you tonight. Mwah.